Hi there. Thanks for joining us today. We have Tom Limoncelli from Stack Overflow, and he's going to talk to you today about low context DevOps. Tom, over to you. Hi, welcome to Low Context DevOps. My name is Tom Limoncelli. I'm the manager of the SRE team here at Stack Overflow. I've been a system administrator for much too long. I blog, I tweet, and I've written a number of books. And if you believe the back cover of the books, I'm a internationally recognized system administrator and DevOps pundit. Um, I mentioned I work at Stack Overflow. We have over 100 million users uh, in 2019. Uh, dem demographers say that there are about 30 million software developers in the world, which means if for every three developers you meet, 10 of them use our website. Now, what's less known about our website is uh, Stack Overflow for Teams. Uh, this is a product that gives a private Q&A experience for your team. And uh, maybe we'll talk about that in the, in the future. So my talk has three parts. Uh, we're going to talk about the sociology concept of high and low context cultures. We're going to talk about low context DevOps, a phrase that I coined recently. And uh, we're going to end by talking about leadership. So part one, high and low context cultures. Let's begin with the story. Story number one, a man is traveling in a foreign land and he enters a village. He goes into the first shop and the shopkeeper won't talk to him. He goes into another shop and they won't talk to him either. And he's, he's quite perplexed. So he's sitting on the side of the road wondering what to do. And a little boy comes up to him and says, Mr. The reason that they're not talking to you is first, when you come to a village, you have to talk to the elders and get their blessing. And then once you have their blessing, everyone will talk to you. Well, he does that and, and everything goes fine after that. Everyone will talk to him. Well, that night he's thinking to himself, how the heck was I supposed to know that? And amazingly enough, at that same time, the little boy was thinking, how could anyone not know that? Story number two. Story number two is about my first week at Stack Overflow. I've been at Stack Overflow for about seven years, and I still remember my training because there was this point where I asked how to create a virtual machine. You know, we use a product called VMware, and my mentor walked me through the process. It was five very complicated steps, and it wasn't written down. Uh, it was just verbally you know, passed on from one system into the other. And I said, wow, this is really complicated. How, how can anyone you know, memorize this? And he said, well, we kind of expected anyone that would get through our interview process would be able to just know how to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> well, that night I remember thinking, how could I have been expected to know all of that? And uh, I wonder if he was sitting at home that night thinking, gosh, you know, we've hired this world-recognized system administrator, how could he have not known how to do these things? Well, there's a postscript to this story. The next day, I got a phone call from my boss who said uh, we had made a mistake in the process. And that just goes to show that even though, you know, one person was very experienced, even he had not, you know, memorized the whole process. So, story number two. So, these first two stories are examples of high context cultures. In a high context culture, communication is implicit. Things aren't really written down. It's people just know the collective history. People have to read between the lines to understand what's going on often. Often what's not said is more important than what is said. In a high context culture, uh, we usually rely on long-term relationships. So this uh, might work better for you know, uh, situations where you're, you're gonna be there a long time. So some examples include like a party with friends or family gatherings. There's just norms and customs that they're not written down, just people know to do them. Contrast this with a low context culture. In a low context culture, communication is explicit. There are rules, you're told what the rules are, and you follow the rules. Knowledge tends to be codified. You know, it's written down, it's public, it's accessible. Um, they make it accessible so that you can follow the rules. A low context culture works best for short duration interpersonal connections. So for example, a large airport, 
you're not going to be at the airport very long. There's a lot of rules, and that's why they're on signs, signs that you can read um, and, and learn that way. Another benefit of low context culture is that the knowledge is more transferable because it's written down, the next person can come along and, and read it. Sociologists that created this concept uh, have ranked languages around the world as being uh, high context, low context, or somewhere in between. And while it's, this is a generalization, uh, Eastern languages are, tend to be known as being more high context, Western languages tend to be more low context. One of my favorite examples locally of a high context uh, environment is New York Penn Station. So Stack Overflow is headquartered in New York City and I live in New Jersey, which means I take the train into work every day. And Penn Station is just an incredibly high context environment. In fact, this is a map of Penn Station. This map only makes sense to people that created the map. This is otherwise pretty much useless. It, you can't even tell where the second floor and the first floor would overlap onto each other. But my favorite thing in Penn Station is this sign right here. The sign that says 7th Avenue Subway to the left. This sign only makes sense if you knew that 30 years ago, the 7th Avenue Subway line changed its name to the 123. That is, to me, the epitome of a high context culture. Now. Recently, I was thinking about this sign and I realized it's illuminated. There's a light bulb behind it and light bulbs don't last 30 years, which means for the last 30